Welcome. All right, so what we're going to talk about is what is component form. Now, um, in my previous video, when I talked about vectors, I said, you know, you, know, you can have an initial aminate terminal side, and we'll call it P and Q, and that's really all a vector is. And you know, if I was going to ask you to draw a vector, well, all you got to do is take a sheet of paper, make a line segment that has a direction, and there you go. And everybody could say, if I say, you know, tell everybody to write a vector, everybody would draw a vector that's going to be probably totally different than the next person. So when looking into drawing vectors, we need somewhere to standardize this. Because if we're just doing line segments, the length of the line is always going to be the same no matter what direction or where you turn it. But the direction is always going to be different. And so that brings me back to my next point is when we're looking at angles and direction, that's always different too unless we have a standardized process. If I told people to give me an angle that's 30 degrees, Oh, that was my phone. Sorry. So if I draw something that's 30 degrees, I could look like this. Here's an angle that's 30 degrees. Some people might draw something like this and say, hey, that's an angle that's going to be 30 degrees. But we all have a different representation of what 30 degrees could represent, right? So um, when looking at this, we came up with a standard, a standard form, which is actually represented right here, where we start with our initial side and we rotate it counterclockwise to our terminal side. And that way, when we're always talking about directions, we're all kind of on the same page. Well, component form kind of does the exact same thing for vectors. So let's go ahead and look at a vector on the coordinate plane. And I'm not going to give any actual points with this, but we're just going to kind of talk about what exactly how we would find the component form. And we'll get into some more examples on this. But let's say we have a vector. P and Q. Now, what we want to do to be able to determine the co what the component form is, um, just like when we had an angle, we had the initial side was always on the x-axis. The initial point in component form is always going to be at the origin. All right. And the component form, it's nice about the component form of a vector. It has the exact same magnitude and the exact same direction. But pretty much the following teachers have a conference oh decided. God. Bullen, Kubander, It always Kirby, happens. Rolf. Allison, Milstone, Shay, and uh, Stevens. Thank you. Sorry about that. So the component form, uh, x1, x2, y2. OK, so let's say we have these initial points, p and q. And I'm going to label them x1, y1, and q1, y2. Well, what the component form is going to do is it's going to provide a vector that starts at the initial point and ends at a different terminal point. But what I hopefully you guys can see is like the direction of this vector is still going to be the same. It's still directed in the same in the same direction as well as the magnitude is going to be exactly the same. But what's nice about this is it's in a standard form that we can apply and compare all vectors to. So how do we take a vector that's just between two a points, a terminal and initial, and write it in component form? So to do that, we can label our vector with this kind of directed line segment above our two points, P and Q. Now, also notice that we're going to write this vector with directional parentheses, right? Because um, and if you remember my video on you know, what's the difference between a point and a vector, this is going to represent a vector. So the, the, so, the direct, or so the pointed parentheses, now we're simply just going to find the difference of my x coordinates and then find the difference of the y coordinates. All right. And when we go ahead and determine what these values are, a lot of times we like to write vectors not only by just what the initial and the terminal points are, but a lot of times we like to give them names. And the names we like to be very creative with, v, w, u. Um, in this case, I'll call this vector v. And when we subtract our x coordinates and our y coordinates, what we like to do is kind of give them the same, same name as our coordinate vector. But now we'll call this v1 and v2. All right. So once we get into kind of some examples, you know, it'll probably make a little bit of sense, and I'll be able to show you uh, how that works. But for instance, just the, the general understanding of what exactly component form is, there you go. Thanks. Where's my phone?